coming up on this episode of Outlook TV, Surrey's Pride Festival. Desi Q, share Vancouver's 15th anniversary. A Canadian at San Francisco Pride. And much, much more. Hello and welcome to Outlook TV. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And my name is T. We'd like to thank the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh Nations for the honour and privilege to film this episode of Outlook TV on their traditional unceded lands. Outlook TV is the queer news magazine show that brings you the stories that matter the most from coast to coast. And we're going to kick it off with Surrey at their Pride celebrations. Yes, rainbows and unicorns exist everywhere. Well, hello, Look TV. It's me, Ollie, and we're at the heart of Surrey right now for Surrey Pride 2023. On the menu, we got some live performances, story hour, and drag performances. Let's check it out. My ancestry is from the Zagame Anishinaabek, Kawakatoos Nations, Treaty 4, and Metis Nation, Green Lake, Saskatchewan. So I'm doing the land recognition. So one of the things I'm going to be doing is sharing the indigenous welcome to this event and making sure that we do recognize that the beautiful cultures that we have here, that we're all aware of the land of which we stand. I'm also really proud to say that we are for the first time properly flying the pride flag right here at City Hall. And if you, and, and to have you here in the plaza is really important. We asked 24 years ago if it was possible to raise the flag uh, on the city pole in Surrey, and we were told no. 2014, we created a delegation to request again the flag to be flown, and we were told no. So last year, um, during the civic elections, we challenged each mayoral candidate on the stage to see if they would be willing to fly the flag fly the pride flag on city, underneath the city uh, flag on city pole. Two of the candidates said they would, and one of them won, and that one candidate, Brenda Locke, honored her uh, election promise to the rainbow community, which is so unusual for the rainbow community to be kept up to elected promises. Oh my God, the 24th annual Pride Festival. Um, it opens with Jaylene Time giving a, a traditional uh, land acknowledgement. It goes through, uh, we're doing story time um, so that we can tell these right wing people that they're not grooming kids when we're in public. Um, and then we've live singers and we've drag queens and it's a, a whole day of unique experiences. We, we suggest that it's from Bollywood to Dollywood and everything in between. And um, we are closing the event at 8.30 to 9.30 with an ABBA tribute band known as Arrival. Well, the new features are um, a, a lot more parking, um, as you can see, a lot more open space, and um, you know the ability to just be in front of City Hall and, and feel the power of it. Um, considering that you know for the last 20 years or so, more years, uh, we were not considered equal in the city. This is the first year that they've raised the pride flag in Surrey. The mayor raised it herself. It's an amazing moment. We're celebrating our 24th anniversary, and this is going to be the biggest pride we've done, and it's just the beginning. If you want to know more about Surrey Pride, you can go to surreypride.ca. From Surrey, this is Ali for Outlook TV. When you're all alone, when you're and now we're off to San Francisco, but don't fear, there is Canadian content. Yes, there's, I believe, a dike on a bike and something very fancy. Pride has no borders. We are here in San Francisco checking out the dike march as well as the parade. Come and walk with us. Good morning and happy Pride. 
This is Kate Brown, president of the San Francisco Dykes on Bikes, welcoming you to our SF LGBTQ plus Pride Parade. Hi, fellow Canadians. My name is Bettina Perry. I originally hail from Vineland, Ontario, Canada, but I now live in San Francisco and I'm prospecting with the San Francisco Dykes on Bikes. Happy Pride! Good morning, happy Pride from San Francisco. My name is Brianna McCree. I am the Community Engagement Director from UCSF and your Community Pride representative. Happy Pride, everyone. Hi, Paul Aguilar, Lifetime Achievement Grand Marshal here at San Francisco Pride 2023. Happy Pride, everyone. Hi, this is Honey Mahogany. I am Community Grand Marshal here in San Francisco. We're wishing you all an incredible Pride season. Right now, it's more important than ever that we celebrate and let our light shine bright. So happy Pride, have fun out there, be safe, and let's hit the streets. From San Francisco, this is Empress Sister Fancy Pants for Outlook TV. It's time for us to take a little break. And while the Pride Month of June is over, make sure you continue to fly your rainbow flag. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. Heading back to Toronto to catch up with Archives. They're celebrating 50 years of recording LGBTQ history. Hello everyone, salut tout le monde. In 1973, I moved to Toronto for a better life. In that same year, the Archives were founded as Canada's national LGBTQ2 plus archives. They're now celebrating the 50th anniversary. And to find out some more, Let's meet the executive director. Um, the Archives is celebrating their 50th anniversary this year, and we really hope that LGBTQ2 plus history continues to be important to folks in the community because there's really nobody else that has had such a long history of being able to collect and preserve and make this collection accessible. We accept a lot of different types of materials, books, papers, artifacts, you name it. We probably have collected it at some point. The Archives has a strong collection of media broadcasting. Um, we hold Canada's first LGBTQ2 plus radio show, the Coming Out Show, which took place in Vancouver. Our collection is accessed by researchers every day. Um, other online or here in person at 34 Isabella Street. So we have over 10,000 researchers that use a collection online and a couple hundred researchers every year that arrive in person. The archives attracts collection donors, including 
just reaching out to various community members who we know have important collections. The archives is funded by community. So our operational budget is provided by community members who support us financially. Our material is displayed for the public every day on our website. We have 26 exhibits online, but every year we do two to, I would say, about six different physical exhibits or loan our material out to places around the world. The Archives tries to create awareness by doing exhibitions, both online and in person. Uh, we have Trivia Night at Glad Day Bookstore here in Toronto, but also online. We collect anything by and about LGBTQ2 plus history in Canada. So not all of that history is good history. Some of that history is difficult. Um, some of that history is violent. Some of that history is racist. And some of that history is transphobic. So when we collect material, we are not going to censure the realities of what history was. What we're going to do is we're going to take that material, we're going to describe it in a way that reflects the realities of the racism or the violence that that collection kind of brings forward, and we're going to talk about it. I think that we have a lot of potential for making LGBTQ2 plus history known not just to community members, but really to be able to highlight and showcase the importance of LGBTQ2 plus community and their impact on the rest of Canada and the world. Thank you, Vegan, for all this information. Also, I just donated this box of printed material from my archives, and you too can do the same by checking the websites. Andre Tardif in Toronto for Outlook TV. Next up, we're going to check out the Guadalajara Gay Games. They're coming up this fall. And if you're going, make sure you reach out to us. We'd love to hear about your story. In 1982, Dr. Tom Waddell started the Gay Games in San Francisco. Vancouver hosted the Gay Games in 1990, the first time the Games were held outside the United States. In Guadalajara, the colors of sport and culture come to life with passion, music and joy. November 3rd of 2023, Guadalajara will be hosting the Gay Games, making it the first time the Games will be held in a Latin American country. We knew that Hong Kong was really struggling with COVID and some issues with this, the government. And so the Federation say, Guadalajara, do you want to organize the games? And we say, yes. So I make a short story that was, um, you know, the, the path we follow. Gay Games Guadalajara will host a number of sports. We are hosting until today, 19 sports, uh, but we are adding two because those associations are going to be responsible for organizing everything. Those two are dodgeball that I know in Canada is becoming very, very popular and uh, figure skating, which is very popular in Canada. The 19 sports that we already are offering are Everything from marathon, half marathon, 5K, 10K, um, all aquatics from diving, water polo, that Canada also uh, is very strong on that sport. Uh, powerlifting, uh, bowling, golf, uh, basketball, beach volleyball, uh, volleyball, football seven, football 11. And actually in those two, I just wanna say that we are trying to convince two of the best professional teams in Mexico to join the Gay Games for the first time. 1,500 athletes from Canada are expected to participate in the Games. Well, the Canadian participation we are expecting is around 1,500 athletes, uh, which is huge. You know, the, the second, I would say, you are the second country with more uh, participants to the Gay Games. And we are well connected. Vallarta is well connected, direct flights from many cities from Canada. So you can probably go first to Puerto Vallarta and then come to Guadalajara, which is just four hours driving or 30 minutes by flight. 
And so we are expecting 1,500. Outside sports, we will have a huge cultural agenda. So we're going to have the 40 years of fashion from Jalisco to the world. Then we're going to have our exhibits. Here where we are is going to be the Fan Fest. And every night, we're going to offer you an, a show, an artistic and cultural event here for all the athletes, for all the participants. If you step into my shoes, maybe then, maybe then, no, then you know. The opening ceremony, we are planning to host it at the Charros Stadium, which is the Pan American Stadium now called Charros because there's a baseball team playing there. Um, what we want to send as a message from Guadalajara to the world in terms of diversity, and that is going to be the core concept of the opening ceremony, is freedom. Birds are going to be part of that. will be very colorful because you're in Mexico. And we're going to have a mix of show between drag queens, everyone around our community, and two different um, musical rhythms, which is pop and Latin rhythms. So it will appeal to everyone that will attend. And we, I don't want to say more, but we are hiring one of the best companies that produce the shows that was working with us in Pan American Games. So the governor and the government, they want to really give a very nice spectacular where it's included everyone. We need you, we need our allies, because we want these gay games to be a celebration of our community in, for the first time in a Latin American city, in a Mexican world. For Outlook TV, this is Mike Keeping in Guadalajara, Mexico. We're going to have to take another break now. Oh, it's hot. I'm nervous. Got to go change. Hi, my name is Bad Shah, and you're watching Outlook TV. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. We're headed to the 15th anniversary Desi Q celebrating South Asian queer culture. We are at Desi Q, the 15th anniversary gala for Share Vancouver. We were last year five years ago, and in five years they've gotten bigger and better. Let's go check out the festivities. Doubled our audience at Desi Q here for our 15th anniversary. We have over 650 people coming tonight. We have 18 elected officials coming. We have over 24 sponsors. So it's been wonderful. And the best part is we're bringing our community together to celebrate in all its diversity. Uh, queer South Asians and friends, families and allies, we welcome everyone. We have straight people, we have transgender people, we have uh, people of all backgrounds. We are debut feature documentary, Emergence Out of the Shadows, hit a home run around the world. But we have a film festival coming out in June 2024. We're gonna showcase five amazing films from around the world here at Surrey City Hall. What drew you to share Vancouver? So I live and, and work and play and, and get to spend time with some incredible BIPOC community members. And I myself am coming from a Moroccan, North African background. So the work that they do in the community to really bridge that gap between tradition and family and history and culture and queerness is so important. So for all of those different things they do in the community is why I wanted to be part of it. And I've actually as a teacher kind of joining in to help with the teacher's guides as well. So first and foremost, through my profession in order to get the films into schools, but more importantly, to help our community, especially queer BIPOC members that are looking for support where there isn't always any. I define Batcha style as more, um, I would say more relatable, honestly. I wanted to be connecting with people and something that I see in Bollywood always was just like, I see myself in there. So I, I want people to look at me being like, I'm, we're feeling nostalgic. We're feeling like we're, like, we're seeing our childhood 
in a way. And like I, I, I want to see my own childhood on a stage. So it's kind of just me presenting what I think is like my love for Bollywood in one frame. <laughs> You know, when I started doing drag, my biggest inspiration was my culture. And when I came to this city, I was trying to find an organization or something that is supporting my culture and is queer as well. And that's when I came across here Vancouver. And honestly, the support since the first day has been so amazing. From me doing drag to me coming out as trans and them supporting me with resources and everything. Sheer uh, is like a family for me. I am from Punjab, India initially, so I moved to Canada as an international national student about eight years ago but before moving to Vancouver I was living in the Yukon that's where I started doing drag so up in the north of 60 honey a star was born I serve traditional culture from Punjab India but apart from that I'm really good in anything that comes from Bollywood Thank you so much for all the work you do share Vancouver my name is Empress Sister Fancy Pants for Outlook TV we're headed off to Toronto now to check out Homo Pride Night. Here are some funny comedians who I'm not sure if they're funnier than we are or not. I mean, I'm betting they are. I'm not sure. Hello, Canada and beyond. It's Bruno, and I'm back at Buddies in Bad Times Theatre for Homo Night in Canada, a 2023 Pride Weekend event featuring some of North America's best queer comics. And tonight, it's hosted by the B-Girls. Let's go check it out. Madonna Chikoli is about to start on her international celebration tour. Yeah, she's the one. It's more of a celebration of life. Homo Night in Canada, an evening of high sticking with some of the most fabulous queer comics in the city. That's right. It's our 21st year doing this show here at Buddies and Bad Times Theatre. And boy, are we tired. <laughs> we started back in, what was it, 1998, be before Y2K. Remember that which wiped out the entire city? Yes. Oh, let's, let's just, what, what can we, what target? Oh, there's almost too many gays. We are just happy that we are here, and then we are continuing to do the work until uh, everyone is able to leave to live freely, and that hasn't happened yet in all the years I've been gay. Because when you mix two mediums like this, drag and comedy, you're a little bit of a weirdo in both communities. You're always overdressed or underdressed. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know, I'll you'll let you figure that one out on yourself. I was once choked in a parking lot in Timmins, Ontario, and I never reported it because I was so hard. The only thing that I truly kind of um, consider whenever I'm approaching my work is just like, is this going to offend somebody? Can this be something that is um, demeaning in some capacity? Are my punching up and my punching down? Those are really the only things that I consider when I'm writing material. Like apparently the marriage project turned 16 year olds into boring middle aged adults. Years ago, I used to tour the Fringe Tours and I went across Canada. So being a queer performer in, in places like Saskatoon and Winnipeg, Edmonton, uh, the, the communities are starving queer uh, entertainment. So it was always so lovely to go to these venues and have these small town or bigger city people come and be so thankful and grateful that you were there. Being excited about a bidet is a sure sign that I am old. <laughs> I think the biggest barrier to being a queer comic in the, especially the Canadian comedy industry, it's just bookers. Audiences don't care. I, I tour, you know, I'm a Canadian comedian, so I'm mostly in small towns performing in, you know, agricultural halls and curling rinks. And I would say 99% of the people at those shows do not care that I'm gay. They just want to know the, that I'm funny. I heard all gays were molested as children. I was like, hell no, I was gay, not an ultra boy. When I first started and I was the only queer comedian in Alberta, I actually took a, a different approach. It, it definitely wasn't easy because sometimes you go into a small community and they'll say like they've never met a queer person in real life before. Um, but I always find that if you can make somebody laugh, then you can connect with them. So even if at first they don't have a connection with you, like humor and laughter is a great way to bridge that gap. They made us laugh. They made us cry with laughter. That was one great night. Make sure to keep following these great queer comics for Outlook TV. I'm Bruno, coming to you from Toronto. 
That is all the time we have for this episode of Outlook TV, but join us when we're back so soon. Yes, and in between then, make sure you check us out on all our social media platforms or join us as volunteers. Because shucks, we're a lot of fun to volunteer with. So fun. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And my name is T. Stay, Stay proud, proud, Canada. Canada.